Okay, in this unit, we're going to wrap up this course by covering a couple of miscellaneous items that we didn't get to cover in the previous units. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to talk about filters and interceptors. We did cover filters in the previous unit. We used it to do logging, we used it to do authentication and authorization. Uh, what we didn't cover is there is another such entity called interceptors that JAXRS provides. Just like filters, interceptors kind of have the similar model. They intercept requests. And uh, you can, again, intercept both a request and a response just like you do a filter. Uh, but you, well, you might be wondering why you, why do we need interceptors when we already have filters? What's the difference between the two? So interceptors have been designed to manipulate the entities, to manipulate the input and output streams. So this way it is different from filters in the sense that filters actually manipulate the header information or you know metadata information, while interceptors manipulate the actual body of the request and the response. Uh, there are two kinds of interceptors. One is the reader interceptor, and one is the writer interceptor. This is again similar to filters. You have one to read and one to write, but what's different here is what's being read from and what's being written to. In the case of filters, it's the request information and the response information. In the case of interceptors, it's the request body and the response body. Um, here's an example for an interceptor. Uh, this is taken from the JAXRS documentation for Jersey. Uh, there is a gzip writer interceptor. The way to implement an interceptor is to implement this interface, writer interceptor. Uh, this has a method called around write to, which gets a context object which contains the output. Now here what's happening is we're getting the output stream and uh, doing a gzip for the output. Okay, so we are basically gzipping the contents of the response, which is why uh, the tool for the task here is an interceptor and not a filter, because we are changing the body. I personally haven't found a lot of uh, uses for the interceptor. You know, gzip is a very classic example of why you would need interceptor, uh, but it's not very common for, uh, for you to write interceptors, but it's a handy thing to know in case you need to mess around with the request or the response bodies. Now let's talk about the difference between filters and interceptors. Interceptors, like we said, is used to manipulate the entities and um, filters are used to manipulate the request and uh, response parameters like the headers, URIs, and all that stuff. Uh, there are two kinds of interceptors. One is the reader interceptor and one is the writer interceptor. Similarly, there are two kinds of filters, the container request filter and the container response filter. So, um, a couple of examples for, uh, you know, an example for a interceptor would be encoding an entity response or encoding an entity request. We saw gzip as an example. That's a perfect use case for an interceptor. Uh, we have already seen examples for filters. We have logging, security, all the cross-cutting concerns which manipulate the request and response parameters. All right, so this is a high-level introduction to interceptors. What's also interesting, and we didn't cover this in the previous lessons, is Filters and interceptors work not only on the server, they also work on the client. These are things that you can implement on the client if you're writing a JAXRS client using the JAXRS API. We have we covered uh, the JAXRS client in detail in Unit 3. Uh, if you were to use that API, you can build filters and interceptors for your client code. In the client side, we have filters, you have two types of filters, which is the request and response, but these are not called container request filter and container response filter. On the client side, they become client request filter and client response filter. They do pretty much the same thing. When a request is sent out, there is a client request filter that comes up, and when the response is received from the server, there is a client response filter that acts. Uh, we also have two interceptors. We've seen this just now. We have reader interceptor and writer interceptor. Another entity that works on the client side, which we've already seen uh, for the server side is message body. So we have message body reader and message body writer. This works similarly to the server side, but uh, in the case of a server side, a message body reader is when a request comes from a client and the server is reading the request. Message body writer is when the server is sending something to the client and the message body writer is writing to the response. In the case of a client, it works the other way. Uh, the message body reader is when the client makes a request to the server, 
and the request body needs to be written to the request. And uh, the message body reader is when the server sends a response back and now the client is reading it, right? So things are flipped on the client side. Uh, if this is very confusing, let me illustrate this with a diagram. Now, let's say you have a client here and the server here, and uh, the client makes a request. I'm gonna highlight all the different elements that act. Now, let's say you have a bunch of uh, filters, interceptors and message body readers and writers on the client. And you also have a bunch of filters, interceptors and message body readers and writers on the server. Now, what's the order? What gets called when? I'm gonna cover that in the slide. And hopefully by the end of the slide, you'll be clear about what happens. When the client makes a request, the first thing that gets called is the client request filter. If there is a request filter on the client side, that filter gets called. So you have an opportunity to change the request parameters from the request. Now the client is making this request. Now you get to change the parameters of the client request before it even goes from the client to the server. Once the request filters are done, then the writer interceptor takes over. Now you have your object. You have, let's say you're making a post request. You have your Java object that needs to be converted to an HTTP payload. Now this is where the writer interceptor comes in before the conversion happens from your instance to the HTTP payload, the interceptor gets a chance to modify that payload. And now once that's done, the message body writer takes over. Now you have your Java instance being written, actually written to the HTTP request using a message body writer on the client side. With this, the request now leaves the client and goes to the server. Now on the server side, this should be familiar to you now. We have a container request filter, which is the first thing that gets executed on the server side, uh, which modifies the request params. And now we have the reader interceptor, which intercepts the read action and lets you modify the payload. And now we have the message body reader, which actually converts from the payload to your Java instance. And now that Java instance is sent to a resource method on your server. Now let's say the resource method executes, it does what it needs to do, and now you have a response to be sent back. Here, things work the other way around. Now before anything else, the container response filter kicks in, allows you to change the response parameters, then the writer interceptor intercepts the write, and finally the message body writer converts your instance on the server side to the response payload. Now the response gets sent to the client, and now before the client gets hold of the response, there is a client response filter, which lets you modify the response parameters. And then you have the reader interceptor on the client side, which intercepts the read. And then finally you have the message body reader on the client side, which converts from the payload to your instance, Java instance on the client. If this looks confusing, don't worry too much about this. It's very unlikely that you have one application with all these different things implemented. Uh, you would have only certain bits and pieces of this. For instance, you would have like a message body reader and a container request filter, right? So it's very unlikely that you have all these different entities working on every request. But uh, this is the order. If, if at all you were to deal with a request which has multiple of these entities, this is the order in which they get executed.